Aquarius singles, welcome. It's your end of November singles read, Meet the Soulmate. That's an eight card read that I do. Uh, it's, uh, I like to say it's uh, not a um, difficult reading or triggery or um, negative. You know, it's always positive because we're simply asking who's the right one for you. And um, we're looking at the traits of your person's personality, behavior, uh, maybe some things about lifestyle, some stories. Uh, look, look more towards their inner nature. Um, <clears throat> I just look at their childhood. We should get a lot of astrology, the sun, the moon, uh, Mercury, maybe, and Mars and Venus, probably. So uh, but let me start. And I use a four pillar spread I use. It's uh, two cards uh, for the emotional aspects, two for intellectual, two for the sexual and love nature, and two for the core values and lifestyle. So, and that's usually all it takes to get to uh, your person here. And it's a predictive read, so it's meant to be someone's probably not uh, you're aware of now. I like to see being single here and having no one on your mind, because you have the heart spread if you have someone on your mind. Also, uh, by the way, it goes out on uh, Saturdays always, uh, Aquarius and Pisces Day here. Um, so do check out the Soul Family Read. I'll put a link in the description. That's just a general read for whoever resonates more about manifestation and spirituality. So let's take a look at your person, <clears throat> Five of Cups. This is going to be in their uh, emotional position. So they didn't have a happy childhood. Um, Knight of Pentacles. Hmm. Let me look too at their, uh, before I say anything, at their intellectual Two of Pentacles. I think that's very good actually. In the world. Wow. I, immediately when I saw the Knight of Pentacles, uh, your person was rescued. Now, remember, this is not the codependency, codependency rescue bullshit. This was a child. And so, um, but nevertheless, the story that they would tell, um, if they don't maybe put it in heroic terms, they were rescued by a kind of knight in a shining armor. Um, and this could... Could have been a male involved. I mean, it might most likely be the grandmother and grandfather, but could be uncle aunt energy, you know, a sister or a brother. Um, um, there, I see a lot of support around them. Okay, that's the one thing I get. Um, and I think they have a Cancer Moon. I have a Cancer Moon. In full disclosure, um, <clears throat> and that's where I usually get the Moon here. <clears throat> But mostly, though, they're fairly stable, so the moon's going to be, in their natal charts, going to be pretty well placed. Um, and maybe one of the water houses or aspecting, uh, like a sextile or trying to Saturn or something like this. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Fresh hamica. <laughs> Boiled flower leaves. Um, so... Um, with the Two of Pentacles, um, I see a Virgo personality or Virgo Sun. We're going to read the Sun. And again, though, kind of well placed. Um, so, and a Cancer Moon and a Virgo Sun go together pretty well, anyway. Um, in the Two of Pentacles. Now, another story they might tell um, they had a significant transition into adolescence which by the way is your uh, has to do with Saturn and maturation and you can peg it astrologically that way the Saturn transits are always so important but so I think they will have a story to tell about adolescence something in the adolescence that helped them I think they had a number of uh, interventions uh, they may have had a, a family around them or maybe the same person stepping in multiple times that really helped them a lot uh, throughout their childhood and likely would continue to do so. Uh, you know, when they got the world on the bottom of the intellectual side here, um, and the world's next to this Knight of Pentacles, I, I'm going to say this. If, if it's a man... Uh, there will be a, a adult that may not be their father. It be their. It could just be a, a someone adopted them, or an uncle or a grandfather. But they're gonna like. They're gonna test a Virgo. 
are going to tell you they kind of model themselves after this person. They may even consciously be aware of nothing bad. Um, this person is very solid, very loving, very kind. Very, you know, they, they reached out and took care of them uh, when they needed someone. Um, and they naturally are very probably strongly Virgo. So, you know, who knows what that could be. Virgos in their sixth house, their sons in their sixth house. Uh, probably Mercury is also conjunct Virgo. I see that could be with the world. Um, you know, Virgo, Virgo is exalted. It's perfect in um, place for Mercury. So Mercury's exalted there. So we're looking at a Cancer Moon, Virgo Sun, Virgo Mercury, very most likely also there. Um, I would not be surprised. We'll look now at the sexual and love nature of your person. So also, you know, we're looking at a person. They're going to come across as very solid with the, with the uh, Five of Cups, man or woman, a little bit caretaking, a little bit mothering, a little bit concerned. Um, I try sexist to say this. With this energy, you almost might not notice it with a woman, but with a guy, it tends to stand out, you know. This is the guy that's getting the sweater for his guy friends. It's just not normally done at our side, you know. Um, but that's, uh, so in Virgo already is a very caring uh, energy. So uh, why well, would be surprised to see some Virgo come up in either their Venus or Mars here? This Knight of Pentacles too. I mean, it just gives me the feeling they got like their Sun and Mercury conjunct maybe in the sixth house. I would not be surprised to see that in their natal chart, guys. So very patient, very understanding. They're going to be listening as you're on a date with them more, remembering the details. They'll feed it back to you with maybe some uh, feeling and understanding thrown in um, you know uh, you could uh, talk for a couple minutes and they'll go back and you know you'll get the feeling from being around them that you really listened to and understood I think they're going to give people the feeling that they're understood it's not so much of the picky Virgo energy of like picking things apart and you know that kind of energy you know um, it's kind of more wanting to help is kind of how it comes for them so, <laughs> this is where you see Venus, guys. Can't make it up. Virgo. So, it's a Venus and Virgo. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. I told you. <laughs> I, yeah, there it is. So, this person. So, think modest. Think selfless. Uh, think uh, serving. They want to serve. Really, if they're a sixth house son, you know, in Vedic, it's like that's the slave position, you know. And oftentimes you find, oddly enough, like with ninth house sons, how often you find they live overseas as an astrologer. It's, it's uncanny. But with sixth house sons, yeah, but probably they're not slaves, let's hope. But, you know, they might be wage slaves. You know, the type of people that, this is exactly the type of person, no matter how much money that they make, it's like never quite enough and... They're sort of always uh, very fixated on work and usually very good at work. And this kind of person, like the perfect worker, like if I was an astrologer advising a company, I think they should use them, uh, particularly for anything to do with a high level position. I think a lot of them do, honestly, a lot of them do. They tell you it's bullshit to pay attention, but yeah, they're like, cha-ching, they're, they're not playing. Um, so now we're gonna look at their Mars, but yeah, there's someone's kind of, um, um, really be in for the long term, you know, be focusing on you. Just a, it's a perfect worker energy because there's not a lot of ego to it. It's really smart. So they're the type of person, they get in there, they know what needs to be done and they do it and they don't need you to be fucking patting them all over the back and, you know, to, they sure shit don't need you telling them what to do. I mean, they, they could tell you what to do. They mostly just kind of energy, they just want to be left fuck alone. You know, but who doesn't, right? Just like they got it. They're like, I got this. Let me handle it, right? They, they ain't the delegator. Now the hair font's coming up underneath of the hermit. What the hell am I to make of that with the Virgo here? I think that's Libra. I'm gonna read it. <clears throat> For this person here. Cause Libra would make sense too. You throw in a Libra Mars here with all this Virgo energy and then a Cancer moon. This person is very relationship oriented, but not in the way like, oh, I want to listen to soulmate stuff. And what about soulmates? Because they might be a little skeptical. And also I think they're like super smart, by the way. 
probably like a genius level IQ. They could have an advanced degree. They could be. They could probably, with their mind, do whatever they want. I'd be real surprised they don't have some kind of degree with that mind. Um, but now you throw in down here this Libra Mars. Um, you know, in terms of their sexuality, it'd probably be a little submissive. And I'm not really talking shades of gray submissive. I just mean, you know, don't be surprised if they, they don't climb all over you. Never underestimate Cancer Moon, the sexuality of a Cancer Moon. Because particularly now, throw in the Libra here. Here's the thing with this person. They need sex, you know, uh, emotionally. They need sex. And you can make of that what you will about codependent, whatever. But in their makeup, you know, sex is not just sex, okay? And they're fucking Virgo all over the place. They can't just go whore around, so they're not going to have those stories. In fact, this is exactly the kind of person with the hermit, which is them, and now the hierophant here in their sexual love nature. Tell me if this isn't, please leave a note when you get to know them. They married the first person they had sex with. I guarantee that. I would bet money. We should have terrible bets, you know, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, I bet she's the kind of person, not to make fun, just say, you know, God bless them, man. Um, you know, and maybe, maybe every person they made love to if they've been married more than once. <laughs> mm hmm So really loyal, it's going to really be about you, you know. Um, even if it's a man, they may appreciate, you know, a little more romance around uh, relationships. Um the quality of your relationship is going to be a large part of the sexual experience for them. So if you guys are being shitty to each other, and then you want to put candles on some Barry White later at night, it probably ain't going to fly real well. Just keep that in mind. Now, core values and lifestyle, page of cups. It's pointing right at that hermit, guys, that Venus, um, Virgo Venus that they have. And the Three of Pentacles, Page of Cups over the Three of Pentacles. So I tell you what, in terms of their career and stuff, and uh, in terms of their lifestyle, they'll be very collaborative. I see again with this Three of Pentacles, it really emphasizes collaboration and ethereal visions illuminated tarot deck here. And to me, this shows um, uh, someone that kind of wants to go along, to get along. Um, it's definitely going to be that way in terms of relationships and it, it could just be that way in terms of their work as well and with the page of cups it's pointing at this Venus energy the hermit um, whatever they do they really give themselves to it um, it just feels kind of almost sweet to me this is exactly the kind of person um, they whatever whoever they work for whatever they do it's some kind of like linchpin function um, that's necessary for like the whole thing to run well. This is, I don't know what I get out of the Page of Cups over the Three of Pentacles. It's like this person, and, and, and you could maybe think of this in terms of your relationship. Um, definitely you're going to be like, there's nobody ever loved me like this. I mean, because it's going to be so much about you. But yet they're a very grounded person. They're not like real needy. It's not like, you know, oh, I need you, I need you. I need and want, I need and want. It's not like that. Uh, this is like, uh, you know, they're just very relationship oriented. They're being very concerned about how do you feel? How are you? Are you okay? How about you feel about your career? Do we need to do, can I do anything to help out that too? <laughs> you know, what do you need? And so they'll have this way about them about work too. Um, and so they'll be able to really give themselves to work. I got a little bit of a feeling they could get taken advantage of um, with the Page of Cups. Um, but the one word, if you had to describe this person in one word, I don't read the bottom of the deck in this reading, so ignore that eight of cups. Um, one word, um, the word for this person is going to be uh, sincerity. Sincerity. Uh, and I think anyone that knows them would probably go, yeah, that would work. Yeah, sincerity. So. Thank you guys. Uh, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, tell a friend, tell a friend, do subscribe. I appreciate your help.